Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Horrifying Hookman Under the light of a crescent moon, the small town of Millwood celebrated the return of autumn with its annual harvest festival. Teenagers laughed and chased each other between rows of pumpkins and haystacks, under strings of flickering lanterns. Among them were Tara and Nathan, best friends since childhood, both lovers of ghost stories and local legends. As the night grew darker, the pair drifted away from the festival lights towards the old Millwood Bridge, an infamous spot rumored to be haunted by the Hookman. According to local lore, he was a former mill worker who had lost his hand in a gruesome accident, replacing it with a sharp metal hook. Years after his mysterious disappearance, teenagers started reporting sightings of a shadowy figure wielding a hook, especially on nights like this, when the moon cast long, menacing shadows. Eager to test their bravery, Tara and Nathan dared each other to cross the bridge alone. Nathan, armed with only a flashlight, went first. Halfway across, he stopped, shining the light into the darkness below. Come on out, hook man, he taunted with a laugh, his voice echoing into the night air. But as he turned to smirk at Tara, the smile quickly faded from his face. Behind her, a figure loomed in the shadows, its outline jagged and uneven. Tara, sensing his alarm, spun around. The flashlight's beam trembled in Nathan's hand as it met the figure's most distinct feature, a glinting metallic hook. Frozen in fear, they watched as the hook man stepped forward, the gravel crunching under his heavy boots. It's just a prank, Tara stammered, hoping to provoke a laugh, reveal a local teen from the festival playing a part, but the figure did not respond. His silhouette remained eerily silent. Their hearts pounding, Nathan and Tara slowly backed away, only to hear a scraping sound from behind them, the sound of metal dragging along the old metal railings of the bridge. They were trapped, the hook man blocking one end, and now, seemingly, another behind them. With trembling hands, Nathan shined the flashlight toward the new noise, revealing nothing but empty air. Could their minds be playing tricks on them? Before they could ponder it further, a loud metallic clang rang out as the hook was slammed into the bridge railing, just inches from where they stood. Tara grabbed Nathan's arm, pulling him toward the woods that bordered the festival. Run, she hissed, and they sprinted off the bridge, their footsteps thundering on the wooden planks. They dashed through the underbrush, branches scratching at their faces, their breaths ragged as they dared not look back. The woods seemed to close in around them, each shadow a hiding place for their pursuer. The occasional clank of metal on wood punctuated their flight, a haunting reminder that the legends of Millwood might be more real than they had ever imagined. As they ran, the festival's lights flickered in the distance, a beacon of safety seemingly out of reach. The forest's edge was near, but so was the hookman's relentless pursuit. Tara and Nathan pushed their tired legs faster, driven by sheer terror, the boundary between myth and reality shattered in a night that refused to end. Breathing heavily, Tara and Nathan burst through the tree line, emerging back into the dimly lit periphery of the Harvest Festival. The joyful screams from the carnival rides and laughter from the game booths sounded surreal, a stark contrast to the terror that chased them. They paused, bent over with hands on their knees, trying to catch their breath and regain some semblance of calm. Do you think we lost him? Tara whispered, her eyes darting back to the dark forest. I don't know, but we can't just stay here. We need to find help, Nathan replied, his voice strained with fear and exhaustion. They moved cautiously toward the center of the festival, weaving through clusters of people. The normalcy of the scene around them felt unsettling, as if they had stepped into another world where the hook man couldn't possibly exist. Determined to warn others, they approached the sheriff's booth where Deputy Collins was chatting with locals. Deputy Collins, Nathan called out as they approached, their urgency clear in their tone. The deputy turned, his expression shifting from amusement to concern at the sight of their disheveled appearance. What's wrong, kids? You both look like you've seen a ghost. 
It's the hook man, sir. We saw him on the old Millwood Bridge. He chased us through the woods, Tara explained rapidly, her words tumbling out in a panicked rush. Deputy Collins's brow furrowed, a mixture of skepticism and worry crossing his features. All right, calm down. Let's not jump to conclusions here. It's probably just some pranksters from the festival messing with you, he reassured them, though he cast an uneasy glance towards the forest. No, it's not a prank. He had a hook, a real hook, and he was following us, Nathan insisted, frustration and fear mounting in his voice. Seeing their genuine distress, Deputy Collins nodded, his expression turning serious. Okay, let's take a walk over to the bridge. I'll check it out myself. Stay close to me and let's try to keep this quiet for now. No need to cause a panic. With Deputy Collins leading, they headed back towards the bridge, the noise of the festival fading behind them as the darkness of the woods enveloped them once again. As they walked, the deputy shone his flashlight into the underbrush, revealing nothing but the night's natural stillness. However, as they neared the bridge, an unsettling silence settled over the area. The usual sounds of nocturnal animals were absent, as if even the creatures of the forest sensed the lurking danger. Suddenly, a sharp metallic scrape echoed through the air, freezing them in their tracks. Deputy Collins raised his flashlight in the direction of the sound, his other hand moving to rest on the pistol at his belt. There, on the bridge, Tara pointed, her voice barely a whisper. The beam of the flashlight swept across the bridge and caught the briefest glimpse of a retreating figure, its movement unnaturally swift and silent for a man purportedly wielding a hook. Deputy Collins took a cautious step forward, his voice authoritative yet tense. This is the police. Identify yourself. Oh. No response came, only the soft rustling of the leaves as a chill wind swept through, heightening the sense of dread that clung to the night air. With each step they took towards the bridge, the tension mounted, their eyes straining in the darkness, searching for a sign of the hookman. The bridge loomed ahead, its structure casting long dark shadows across their path, a silent sentinel to the night's horrors. As they set foot on the wooden planks, the faint sound of retreating footsteps teased their ears, leading them further into the unknown, the hookman always just out of sight, his presence a menacing promise of terror that refused to end. As they cautiously advanced across the bridge, the wooden planks creaked under their weight, each step echoing into the night. Deputy Collins held his flashlight steady, its beam slicing through the darkness, revealing nothing but the empty path ahead. The silence was oppressive, heavy with the weight of their collective dread. Nathan clutched Tara's hand tightly, his eyes scanning the darkened edges of the bridge, expecting at any moment to see the gleam of the hook reflecting in the light. Tara's heart raced, her breathing shallow as she tried to convince herself that they were safe with Deputy Collins there. Suddenly, the silence shattered. A loud, metallic clang rang out, reverberating through the air like a death knell. It came from the direction they were heading, the far end of the bridge where shadows pooled darkest. Deputy Collins immediately drew his pistol, pointing it towards the sound, his other hand signaling them to stay back. Stay behind me, he whispered tensely, moving forward with deliberate steps. Tara and Nathan followed, trying to make as little noise as possible, their eyes wide with fear. As they reached the end of the bridge, Deputy Collins swung his flashlight around in a wide arc, revealing nothing but more of the thick, impenetrable night. Just as he turned to reassure Tara and Nathan, a figure emerged from the shadows directly behind them, its movements silent and swift. It was the hook man, his tall, gaunt silhouette outlined against the moonlight, the hook gleaming ominously in his hand. Before Deputy Collins could react, the hook man lunged, his hook arcing through the air with deadly precision. Deputy Collins managed to fire a shot, the report loud in the quiet of the night, but it was too late. The hook found its mark, tearing through the deputy's shoulder, pulling him back with ferocious strength. Tara screamed, and Nathan pulled her away, running back towards the festival, their hearts pounding with primal terror. Behind them, the sounds of a struggle faded into the night, swallowed by the whispering winds. Tara and Nathan didn't look back, their minds filled with the horrifying image of the hook man and the sound of their friends' cries. They burst into the clearing of the festival, 
gasping for air, their faces pale and eyes wide with terror. Immediately, they were surrounded by concerned onlookers, their appearance in distress causing a stir among the crowd. The hook man, he's back, Tara managed to say between sobs, her voice catching in her throat. He got Deputy Collins. The festival erupted into chaos, the light-hearted merriment turning to fear and confusion as people scrambled in every direction. The local police were called, and soon the area was flooded with officers and search teams, their lights piercing the darkness, searching for any sign of Deputy Collins or the Hook Man. As the search continued into the early hours of the morning, Tara and Nathan sat huddled together, wrapped in blankets, their eyes haunted by what they had witnessed. The police found no sign of Deputy Collins, nor any trace of the Hook Man. It was as if both had vanished into thin air, swallowed by the legend that haunted Millwood Bridge. The town of Millwood was left in shock, the festival forever marred by the night's terror. Tara and Nathan, forever changed by the events, knew that the Hook Man was no longer just a legend whispered in fear. He was a reality, a specter of death that haunted not just the bridge, but the very soul of their town. As dawn broke, casting light over the river and woods, the mystery deepened, leaving a chilling question unanswered. Where had the Hookman gone, and when would he return? Thank you for listening. Now watch this video 